So first thing that pops into my mind is how it almost seems like real yoga and real meditation happen spontaneously. The nature of the awakened mind, which is that everything is spontaneously happening. The body is automatically behaving. So people that have a little jolt of kundalini shakti type energy notice that, at least temporarily, that the body is being moved by itself. And in a, a high awareness type state, one might find the body spontaneously contort into an asana or into a meditative pose. But really, all human behavior is automatically occurring. It's just arising. It's easier to see in the animals because they're in the non-dual state, but the, the human brain interprets it, well, the animals are simpler. And so, yeah, if I wave the cat toy, the cat chases it reliably. <laughs> you know, seeking falls away when suffering falls away. And suffering falls away upon awakening. Yeah, it's hard to, to think you're a person. And everything's perfect exactly as it is. It's always that way. There isn't any actual separation. But it sure seems real. And it sure feels real. And when it feels real and seems real, then there's suffering. People seek because they want that suffering to end. And again, energy, prana, kundalini shakti type energy can give glimpses of that automatic body automatically behaving. It can give glimpses of there being no one there and the bliss of that, of being in the body instead of the mind, as it were or being the body instead of the mind. We're so used to it being the other way around. We're so used to trying to be the mind instead of the body. And yet from the awakened perspective, there's a type of embodiment rather than being in the head, just being the body, you know, being the human animal and crying or whatever it is. The, there's a, a release, a relief, an expansion, a spaciousness, an ease. So we're so used to being contracted. just uh it's like being a wild animal another way of saying that is some people are wired for awakening so if you feel that uh, on some level you're more so a wild human and you don't understand why all the other humans aren't you know all that means is that you're more wired for that non-dual state you're 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 in touch with that awakened awareness, if you will. You're in touch with the non-dual state, with your, your own wild nature, and it doesn't conform to rules. You're free. <laughs> you were born with the propensity toward freedom.
And you don't need anyone's permission to be what you are. And it doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't matter how it seems, it's okay to be selfish, etc. So the mind will experience things like shame and guilt and uh, thinking it's on the wrong side of, you know, that it's doing it wrong, that, it, that it's evil or shameful or guilty. And yet, upon awakening, those are specifically all the things that go away forever because there's really no reason for you to ever feel guilty or shame. It's just that wild animals sometimes remind the domesticated animals of how domesticated they are and they, they like and hate their predicament. But you know, there's a type of courage to the boldness of uh, just being the wild animal. There's, there's freedom there. And that's why some people will try to shut it down because you can't be free if I can't be free. <laughs> but it's also trying to, to domesticate you. And you know, it's, it's nice that we have civilization in a way. It's, it's comfortable and we have technology and we're able to talk to people across the world and things on a, it's like magic. And yet it's also all in, conjured up by the dualistic mind. And the dualistic mind likes to judge things as good or bad. And there's nothing good or bad about a tiger. You just happen to be a wild animal. That's it in a nutshell, you know? You can't, you can't not be a wild animal. You know, if you bring the wolf indoors and it's still a wolf. <laughs> and there's a, there's a genetic component and there's also a cultural conditioning component, but all it means is that you're more wired for awakening itself. That you're more in line with the awakened state. And that you will, will defy all labels and trends. It's kind of like a graph. There's all these data points. There's a trend line. Well, you're an outlier. You're not, you don't match up with the the expectations. You don't match up with the controllability. And that's a good thing. Even though there's no good, no bad, no things. That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, you know, just being like the tiger doesn't judge itself for being a tiger. It's funny how that works. Because there's really no reason, no real reason to feel shame or guilt. And yet the seekers that do wake up tend to be, you know, more intelligent than average. And because of that, partly because of that, they suffer more. And if you are a wild animal trying to be domesticated, you're gonna suffer more. And if you feel isolated, you're gonna suffer more. So it just means that you're destined for freedom as freedom. That's all it means. <laughs> ah.
the main thing is to just enjoy as deeply as you can, as freely as you can. That's what your own nature really is. Your true nature is enjoyment, freedom, nature itself. You know, wild plants have more nutrition. Wild animals are healthier. It's psychologically healthy to be wild. Your very yeah. nature is freedom to do, be anything. 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 And it tends to be the more wild type humans that are able to express that freedom and, you know, the villagers will chase you with torches and pitchforks. The same way they would chase a tiger out. And that's okay. What happens is okay. Whatever happens is better than that. Everything's perfect. Whatever happens next is absolute perfection and is an expression of liberation and freedom and limitlessness. Even our limits, our imaginary limits are an expression of that limitless nature. Your nature is everything that's happening in the jungle. You are nature. Little kids are wild and little kids don't suffer until the ego comes online. That sense of separate self comes online around age eight on average depends, but that's when suffering begins. And we're all trying to get back there. Some of us slip back into that. And those of us that slip back into that are, are wild and free and clever and you know th there is an overlap between the awakened mind and things like sociopathy they're different because from the awakened perspective there's also this love just loving everybody you know and a sociopath can't do that doesn't have that ability and yet that's just always on always naturally the case in the awakened state there's no separation, you know? I am you. So there's just love for everyone. And there's love loving everyone as they are, no matter what they do. <laughs> you know, what you love about the tiger is its tigerness. Thing is right and wrong. There's no such thing as good and evil. There's no such thing as Oh, you should say you're sorry. Why? If it's all perfect, then there's no mistake. If, there's, if it's all perfect and there's no mistake, why would you be sorry? Why would you feel shame or guilt? You wouldn't. Heartless, <laughs> spontaneous happening. It's not... Um, so it's, it's a description of the awakened state. It's a description of the non-dual state of awareness. It's not, um, yeah. it's not something you have to do as a process to get there. It's something that will just happen on its own when, when the me falls away. When the, and the me is like, uh, you know, the separate sense of self is, uh, again, it's 
partly the result of being traumatized by the cultural conditioning. So it's mm -hmm. not like, so e even being that isn't your fault and yet you're also not a victim. You're not a victim or a bully. You're just free. And there's no way it's supposed to look or feel. There's just the way it appears as the looking and the feeling. And the, you know, the only thing you can really uh, seemingly do is just try to enjoy every moment. Because, you know, 10 years from now, you might look back on your life and uh, wish you had enjoyed this moment more and appreciated this moment more for what it is as it is as it occurs because it's this will be gone soon too just enjoy every little step of the journey and there's no there's no right or wrong way for it to look like or appear as or it's all just happening and it's perfect and it's wild and free it's free from all preconceived notions or labels. It's free from being free. <laughs> it's total liberation. You don't have to be anything. You don't have to be domesticated. You don't have to be wild. You don't have to be anything. It's just what it is. It's just... There's, there's layers of our nature. Some of them are more imaginary than others. The, the cultural overlay, the conditioned mind is the cause of suffering. Even though there's no cause, effect, time, space, it's still causing, it is the suffering. So the idea that you're someone that you're a mind, that you're a person with a story that can be a success or a failure or do something right or wrong. A fairy tale. You're more so the body as a wild animal than you are the story of the imaginary mind. And it's harder for people that are intelligent to get to not identify with the mind. So if you're intelligent, you're going to be drawn to identifying with the mind, thinking that the idea is to not identify with the body and to identify as the pure mind, but really it's, it's, it looks more like, you know, just be the body, just be the body without the mind and just enjoy life the same way a wild animal would. And that's what needs to hear itself. You need to know that you're not alone, that this is, that this is how it works. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a, it wouldn't matter what your external environment gave you or not. You could have all the money and fame and friends and reputation. You'd still feel wrong no matter what. And uh, from the other side of this, you know, upon awakening, it won't matter Again, you know, it could be horrible things happening and you'd be a okay, you'd be fine. So there's uh, yeah, and you and you know that uh, you know that uh, you know it's kind of like everyone else seems happy and seems like, oh, you know, all the human things make them happy and you're wondering like, why isn't this working for me? And it's because again, you know you're you're wired a different way and you're wired for that awakening experience. You're primed, you're ready for it. And, um, you know, you're spontaneously ripening, even though it feels like it's years overdue. <laughs> <laughs>